Fire. The FGM-148 Javelin is one of the most prolific anti-armor platforms in the US military, providing a reliable tank killing capability to dismounted infantry, combat engineers, and scouts. They're also expensive. I mean, firing one is like launching the cost of a three bed, two bath house at the enemy. But how exactly is the Javelin used? In this video, we're taking a look at the capabilities of the Javelin, how it fits into military units in the US, UK, and Australia, and some notes on how it can be employed in combat. But before we get into that, I'd just like to thank the Brigade, who provide us with the support we need to make videos regardless of what YouTube thinks about it. A special shout out goes to Lloyd Somers, who's been supporting us since May 2020. If you want to help Battle Order grow and get access to a bunch of perks, sign up over at patreon.com slash battle order. But back to the topic at hand. The FGM-148 Javelin is a man-portable anti-tank guided missile, with a command launch unit weighing in at 14 pounds and each missile weighing 35 pounds. The Javelin is 31 pounds heavier than an AT-4, 21 pounds heavier than an N-Law, but still far more portable than the vehicle or tripod mounted tow. This makes maneuver over short distances quick, but can slow down longer range moves, especially through heavily vegetated terrain. In its current sighting configuration, the Javelin has an effective range of about 2,000 meters against personnel and heavy weapons, and 2,500 meters against armored vehicles. Against the most armored opponent, flank shots using the direct attack flight path and overhead shots using top attack mode are the most reliable. With its ability to defeat explosive reactive armor with a tandem heat warhead and target thinner roof armor with the top attack mode, US Doctrine claims the Javelin is effective against all known armor. This makes the Javelin the most portable, reliable tank killer in the US infantry's arsenal, although other countries have even more portable short-range top attack systems like the N-Law. The Javelin's missile is guided via an infrared seeker in its nose, which independently guides the missile to its target without gunner input post-launch. This has advantages in survivability, since the gunner can immediately take cover or relocate to avoid being targeted even before the missile lands. Especially useful given it takes 7 seconds for the missile to travel 1000 meters. Additionally, its sighting package allows for reconnaissance and surveillance use. The CLU includes a day sight with 4 times magnification, and a passive infrared night sight at 4 or 9 times magnification, and it can be used without a missile attached. Passive IR is undetectable to the enemy because they don't emit radiation, but they do have their limitations as well. For example, targeting can be degraded at dusk and dawn due to low light conditions and a lack of temperature contrast between the target and the background. Background IR clutter, like a burning vehicle, or passive countermeasures like infrared blocking smoke can also throw it off. Additionally, the system is not officially capable of discriminating targets past 2000 meters, although the theoretical maximum range is likely significantly greater. Obstructions to the Javelin's flight path, including woods, buildings, and mountains, also have to be factored into planning. However, because of its soft launch system where the missile is ejected before igniting, the Javelin can safely be fired from inside confined spaces such as buildings. Organizationally, Javelin employment varies country to country, but it generally serves from the squad all the way up to the battalion level for use against armored vehicles, bunkers, and heavy weapons. In US infantry BCTs, each rifle company and the battalion scout platoon have six javelins. Under rifle companies, each platoon has a weapon squad, which includes two anti-armor teams and two M240 teams. The anti-armor teams serve either the javelin or after the mid-2010s, the Carl Gustav recoilless rifle. This makes for a total of 24 javelins in the light infantry battalion. Meanwhile, in striker units, weapon squads lack these dedicated teams. Rather, each striker carries a Javelin CLU that dismounted infantry can use on the ground. This makes for 27 Javelins per striker infantry battalion. Additionally, with the introduction of the Crows J remote weapon system, Javelins will also be employed as vehicle weapons. This will allow the platoon to engage enemy vehicles while mounted and under armor, and could potentially negate the need for infantry to dismount to provide anti-armor overwatch for the vehicles. 
In both light and striker infantry companies, the Javelin has the longest effective range of any of the organic weapon systems. American Doctrine typically prefers to use the Javelin against targets between 1,000 and 2,000 meters away, as this limits the gunner's susceptibility to detection and enemy fire. The Javelin does have a minimum range of only 65 meters, but using it at distance shorter than one kilometer increases the risk to the gunner. Firing at longer ranges also disrupts the enemy, causing premature deployment and shifting the initiative to the defender. Alternatively, if the first missile fails to destroy a vehicle, the additional space coupled with fire and forget capability reduces risk to infantry in a defensive posture. However, this is all terrain dependent and a significant portion of environments won't be able to maximize the range of the Javelin. Moving on, in the mechanized infantry mounted in the Bradley fighting vehicle, rifle companies have six Javelins, two per platoon to augment their rifle squads. Because the Bradley has its own longer range tow missiles, dismounted Javelins here act as secondary AT platforms. Same is sort of true in the light and striker infantry, but their tows are attached from battalion and brigade level respectively, whereas mechanized infantry companies always have them. As such, they can be used to cover secondary avenues of approach and target weaker armored vehicles. Additionally, because most countries operate with tanks and mechanized infantry in tandem, targets of varying threat levels have to be engaged throughout a defense. So, terrain permitting, Bradleys with their toes can start engaging enemy tanks out to 3,700 meters, while the Javelin can engage lighter IFVs and any remaining tanks out to 2,500 meters. Because tanks usually operate in platoons of three or four, when one tank is moving, one or more tanks are usually providing overwatch. That means isolated javelin teams can be easily targeted if they fire on a moving tank, so mutual support is critical. For example, if one javelin team engages and a concealed tank sees them and shoots back, a second javelin team could acquire and destroy the overwatch. Conversely, with modern active protective systems, which detect incoming missiles with radar and destroy them with explosively formed projectiles, there is the chance the first missile fails to destroy the target. Now, the Javelin in top attack mode can counteract some APS systems with limited vertical targeting, and APS mounted externally can be damaged. But it's probably not the best idea to base doctrine on the enemy's equipment not working, or assume they won't develop more effective counters to top attack munitions, especially with how proliferated top attack ATGMs are with NATO countries. Thus, simultaneous saturation from multiple Javelins, AT4s, and TOWs, ideally from multiple directions, might be required to overwhelm effective countermeasures in the future. Building off mutual support, Javelin teams are also vulnerable to enemy infantry. Thus, in a world where tanks operate with infantry, Javelins need to be employed near their own supporting friendly infantry. By contrast to the Army approach, the US Marines employ the Javelin as a battalion asset that can be tasked out to rifle companies as needed. As such, they may act in support of the battalion as a whole, or be split and attached directly to maneuver companies. In their battalion weapons company, the Marines operate a Javelin section under its anti-armor platoon with three squads totaling 12 Javelin teams. These supplement four vehicle-mounted tows, although the plan is to phase out the tow in favor of the Javelin going into the future. The Marines are also currently experimenting with training riflemen in the Javelin's use, which in future dispersed amphibious operations could allow them to field a lighter force that can tailor its loadout to the task at hand. Similarly, the British and Australian armies also operate Javelins at the battalion level. In British Army Infantry Battalions, 12 Javelins split into three sections are contained within the Maneuver Support Company under the Anti-Tank Guided Weapon Platoon. The Australian Army is similar, except their support company's direct fire support weapons platoon is much more multi-purpose. Rather than just qualifying on a single weapon system, direct fire diggers qualify on not only the Javelin, but also recoilless rifles, medium and heavy machine guns, and automatic grenade launchers. In total, the Aussie Support Company is authorized six Javelins max, as the DFSW platoon has six teams, but they're also responsible for manning many other necessary weapon systems, so in reality, fewer than six would be used. If you enjoyed this video, check out this video where we take a deep dive into the US Army Striker Infantry units, including their new organization and doctrine. We'll see you over there.